The Core P90TG from Thermaltake sports an open-air design and a prism-shaped body surrounded by 5mm thick tempered glass for a spectacular view from any angle. A trio of compartments house full-size hardware and expansive support for custom water cooling, all of which can be shown off vertically, horizontally, or even on your wall. To learn more, click the link in the description for more info. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. I just want to start this video off by saying I am truly sorry for the actions of my identical twin brother, Lyle, who came in here unbeknownst to me into my own studio when I was gone and built this travesty of a system, decided to film it and upload the video in its entirety to my YouTube channel. I am sorry. I had no idea that this happened until after the fact, and uh, trust me, I had some very strong words with Lyle uh, as soon as I found out. But I thought at the very least I could make light of a bad situation by learning from all of the mistakes he's made when assembling this rig. So today what we're gonna do is compare the gaining performance of the system that he's built in its current state against an identical one using all the same hardware that I've reconfigured and installed everything properly. Just to see what kind of performance drop off, if any, you would incur from building a system like this. Now, before we dive into the benchmarks, I wanted to quickly point out all of the things that Lyle has done incorrectly here. There's quite a few of them. So for starters, we have our case fans completely still. The system's powered on, mind you. And yet we have two 120s at the front, a 140 at the back, and a 200 millimeter up top that are not plugged in. So that's a lot of airflow we're missing out on that's not reaching our main components. And we'll actually be able to validate soon enough what kind of thermal cost that costs. Additionally, we have a CPU cooler with a fan mounted on the left side of the fin stack, moving air towards the front of the case, which seems a bit backwards to me. If it were me, I'd have the fan on the opposite side, pushing air through the radiator towards the back of the case so it can get ejected out with the help of this fan, uh, assuming it was plugged in. Look at this. Only one of our memory sticks is mounted in the proper slot. That's a 50% Lyle. You know what that is? An F. We also have a very nice MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X graphics card that's unfortunately mounted into an X4 slot. So it's only receiving four PCIe lanes, which uh, if there's gonna be anything I think that tanks gaming performance with this system, it's gonna be that. And honestly, I don't think there'd be as much concern if this was slotted in the X8 slot, because there's typically very little drop off going from 16X to 8X, but I think 4X, we're tipping the scales at that point, and we'll see exactly what kind of damage that does. We have a power supply that's mounted upside down, depending on who you ask, with the fan up top here, which some people claim is going to compete for airflow with your graphics card, especially one that's mounted so closely together. Um, I think this might be a non-issue once we mount the GPU up to the 16X slot, so maybe this might be one area where Lyle gets off easy, but rest assured we'll hold him accountable for everything else, like these front panel connectors that are just sort of hanging out of our case like entrails, absolutely disgusting. Uh, he could have at least put them behind the motherboard tray if he wasn't gonna plug them in. What a pig. And finally, we have an SSD that's just hanging out of a cable grommet. Not sure what the thought process was there, Lyle. Did you miss the one, two, three, four SSD tray right in front of you? Come on, dude, this is unacceptable. And quite frankly, I can't look at the system a moment longer. So let's just go ahead and redo everything he's done wrong, which is everything, and give this thing a makeover. All right, guys, this is what a proper system should look like, Lyle. Take notes. We got our GPU in the proper X16 slot. Our CPU cooler is facing the right way. Our case fans are spinning for the love of God. Although this one is kind of picking up on my mic right now, so I'm gonna unplug it. <laughs> Don't mind me. Rest assured, I tested it uh, with the fan spinning up for our benchmarks. But what I wanna say here is that not only does this clean up the overall look of our system, uh, especially after tidying up the cable management, but in theory, making these changes should drop our temperatures on our 1700, our Ryzen 7 1700 and our GTX 1080, while also boosting our gaming performance in terms of frame rates. So I think it's time to validate these claims with a set of benchmarks that I run at 1920 by 1080 on Windows 10 64-bit using the latest Wickle drivers from NVIDIA. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here are the benchmarks. <music>
Well, the benchmarks have spoken, and what they've said is that this new and improved system outperforms the old one in pretty much every area. Starting with the graphics card, I mean simply swapping it from the X4 slot where it was just being choked for data into the X16 slot, we saw a tremendous 48% uplift in average frame rates and that was combining all the data from our five different tests. That's insane. That's really, really insane. Almost to the point where it felt like I was gaming on two different systems because this new one uh, was so much more visibly smooth in every sense. That being said, I gotta give the old crappy system some credit. It was still very playable, but the frame rate difference is just so vast that uh, it really is kind of night and day. Additionally, all the other changes that we made in the system have less of an impact on frame rates directly and more to do with thermals, I would say. Uh, particularly for our Ryzen 7 1700 here, we actually dropped five degrees, going from 42 to 37, which isn't a whole lot. Uh, granted, this is a 65 watt TDP chip in the first place, so it's not gonna get very hot from the get-go. And then four degrees were dropped off of our graphics card going from 72 to 68. Now, I was actually expecting a much larger thermal delta here, and I think one of the reasons, apart from, again, 65 watt TDP chip that we're seeing this, is because the case that we're dealing with is so cavernous. There's a lot of breathing room inside of the Trooper as is, and also the fact that we get that nice, unimpeded front mesh grill uh, means that we actually have room for passive airflow here, uh, which definitely helps out our components, evidently. So I think what this is all chalking up to is that the moral of the story today is quite simple but important. And that is, if you're gonna do something, do it right. Don't be like Lyle and don't just plug and chug things in arbitrarily. Read the manual. Don't be afraid of the manual. Try to swallow your pride, you know, when it comes to, to building your PC and stuff like that. And always remember that just because something fits doesn't mean it should go there. That's what she said. Cutting things off right there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let me know in the comments if your system at home looks anything like this one, or if there's uh, certain things that you've mounted, you know, in an unorthodox or unconventional way for whatever reason, uh, and, and how that's been working out for you. I'd love to hear all about it down below. Apart from that, guys, toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any more of our tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also follow us on Floatplane for three bucks a month if you want to catch our videos a week early without ads. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Apart from that, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.